Hello, we are Matt and Pat, and today we'll be looking at the KMP algorithm. String matches is an extremely prevalent problem in the sciences, and in the latter half of the 20th century, many mathematicians set out to find the most efficient way to do so. String matching is a very easy problem to solve naively, however, this is a very inefficient solution, as the worst time complexity is O, N, M, where N is the length of the input text and M is the length of the pattern. There are a great number of better ways to solve the string matching problem, and we'll be looking at the KMP algorithm. For the algorithm to work, we need to construct a prefix table, which tells us how far we can shift the pattern along at each turn without missing any matches. Essentially, this means the algorithm never needs to backtrack in the pattern or the input string. To construct the prefix table, set the first element of the table to minus 1. Set the second element of the table to 0. Set a variable i to 0. This is the index of the end of the prefix. Set the iterator j to 2 and increment by 1 each time. Compare the pattern at index j to the pattern at index i plus 1. If they do not match and i is not 0, then we enter a while loop, and we repeatedly set the value of i to pi i until they match or i has reached the beginning of the pattern. If they match, increment i. Before we look at the, at the next character specified by index j, we set pi i to the current value of i. It is worth noting that the prefix and suffix can overlap. The algorithm works by iterating over both the input string and the pattern. We denote the pattern's current index with the letter i, which is initialized to minus 1 after which we build the prefix table using the method just described on the previous slide. We then begin iterating over the input string, where each element of the input is handled by one or more of three conditions. The first condition is if the current characters we are examining in the input string and the pattern do not match. If this is the case, we repeatedly use the prefix table to set the index i until the current characters in both strings match. The second condition is if the current characters in each string match. If they do, we move on to the next character in the pattern. If the number of consecutive matches we have made is equal to the length of the pattern, we have a match and can output the index of the start of the match in the input. We can then use the prefix table to set index i so we can continue searching. This will now be demonstrated by an example of where the algorithm performs well. We initialize the first element to minus 1 and the second element to 0. We now find the largest prefix and suffix. Here it is only the character a. The last element of the prefix is at index 0, so we set the current element in the prefix table to 0. Examining the next character, we see the largest prefix suffix combination is AB, so we set the current value to 1. At the next element, BA is now the largest prefix suffix. As the index of the last element of the prefix is 2, we now set this value to 2. The prefix and suffix are now the substring BAB, and the value is 3. The final prefix and suffix are BABA, so we set the current value of the index of the last element of the prefix, which is 4. We've reached the end of the pattern, so we can now return the prefix table. Before we start iterating over the input string, we initialize n, m, and i and create the prefix table. We then start iterating over the string. The first character is a mismatch, but we cannot use the prefix table to skip backwards because we're still at the start of the string. Therefore, we move on to the next character in the input and compare it to the first character in the pattern. We have a match, so we increment i. While the input string and pattern match, we continue to increment i. We have now made m consecutive matches. This means that we have found the pattern in the input and can output its starting index. We also use the prefix table to set the value of i to the last point in the pattern we know has already been matched. Here the index of the match starts at 1. We have another match. a and b don't match, so now we have to repeatedly set the value of i to the value specified in the prefix table until we have found a match we reach the start of the pattern. Here the start of the pattern is reached, so we move on to examine the next element in the input. We found a match. Now we have a mismatch, so we use the prefix table as before. This happens two more times. We find another matching substring and output its starting index, which is 13 in this example. We set i once again to the value specified in the prefix table. We find one more character match before reaching the end of the input string, where we terminate the algorithm. Now let's look at a real-world application of this algorithm, DNA matching. We have ch specifically chosen an example which also demonstrates where the algorithm doesn't perform well, when there aren't many repetitions and the alphabet isn't as small as just A and B. Again, let's construct the prefix table first. We set the first and second element to minus 1 and 0 respectively. We now iterate over the pattern and compare it to itself to find a prefix and suffix combination. None of the characters in the pattern match the first character, Hence, we set the value in the prefix table to 0 at every index after 1. As before, we initialize the values of n, m, and i and create the prefix table. We then begin iterating over the input string. 
We match the entire pattern to the input string except for the last character. A and C do not match, so we use the prefix table to set I to point at the first character as the value of the last C in the prefix table is zero. We only have one more match before we, a mismatch occurs and again we set I to point at the first character. Then once again we match the entire pattern except for the last character. We use the prefix table again to set I when G and A do not match. We've now reached the end of the input string so the algorithm terminates. The worst time complexity for the matching is ON as you would have to search linearly through each element of the input string. This was demonstrated in the previous example where each half of the input string and the pattern only differed in the last character. However, the time complexity doesn't improve much in the average case and is still in the order of ON. If the algorithm is implemented cleverly, the prefix table generation has time complexity OM, where M is the length of the pattern. The algorithm performs best when there is a large number of repeated substrings in the input and pattern. This typically happens when the alphabet is small. You only need to allocate space for the prefix table, so the algorithm has a space complexity of OM. We have provided a link to an implementation of the KMP algorithm in C in the description. Thanks for watching.